All right, this is going to be a very basic tutorial on how to use the smart button 5A1, which is the five analog buttons. <clears throat> I should say five buttons to one analog pin. We're also going to be using the smart mod 5 LED, which I have previously have a tutorial on, and the smart core U which I also have a tutorial on, on my channel that you can look on how to get this set up. We're also going to be using the Smart Bus Quad, although you could use whatever configuration that allows you to plug in all these different modules and the Smart Core at the same time. So I'm going to go and place these in, get rid of the bags here, and put my Smart Core U down here in the bottom left. So the USB connector is facing outwards here. Still afraid I'm going to break these. I've seen some people on the forums uh, and on the Kickstarter comment page that already have had these connectors back here break off. Um, you might want to check yours and you can manually solder them in better um, if that's going to be a problem. I haven't went through and checked on mine yet, but I think I will after this, uh, after this video. Okay, we're going to take the LED module. I'm going to stick it up here on the smart bus basic number four slot so it's up and out of the way if it will go in come on there we go and finally we're going to put our buttons in the bottom right in the smart bus basic slot number three pick this up so make sure we get this on there good all right, the way, uh, if you haven't dealt with analog signals before, the way these buttons are rigged up, um, each button has its own resistor of a different value in here. So when you do the analog read, um, this happens to use port number zero, um, or pin zero, sorry. Um, but when you do the read, depending on what button is pressed, you will get the different resistant value returned back. Um, it's not exact. Sometimes it's within three or four. Um, it should be within one of the value that you're looking for and you'll see all that in the code I set a minimum and a max value to capture each one of these and uh, make up for any analog any noise there that might be going uh, with your Arduino um, I haven't tested this at low voltage um, I don't think it would work very well when it starts to drop below 5 volts of course I haven't even tested the smart core U yet uh, to see what kind of issues it has um, when dropping below the standard voltage. All right, we're gonna head over to the computer. The code is a little bit lengthy, um, and I use a third-party library I found on the Arduino site to handle um, analog buttons. So I'm gonna head over there and explain the code. All right, here we are in the code for the SmartMod button 521A. Um, as you saw, we are also gonna use the 5 to 5D 5 LED module as well. Um, this is a library, analogbuttons.h needs to be included. You can find it here. There's a link right above that shows you where to go find that code. It was actually written for old versions of Arduino, so you need to make this change here and replace this line of code with this header file in the analogbuttons.h file in your directory. If you extracted this library correctly it'd be in your program files Arduino um, libraries folder and you can find it easily open it up in a text editor save the file and you should be good to go um, if you looked at my previous tutorial on the LED module these pins right here are declared for each LED and I actually put a little chart here that shows you uh, the number printed on the PCB and what digital pin that maps to for the LED. This is our integer here, button pin 0, which will be analog pin 0. That the button 5 button module actually runs on. Uh, here's a simple function I wrote to blink an LED for a number of blinks. Very basic. Turn the pin high. Wait. Turn the pin low. Wait. This right here is the callback routine that the button library that we included earlier uses. Um, the first section here, if held, 
Oh, one second. Let me get this. If held, this is for when a button is pressed and held. Um, I set the delay to five when I declared the buttons, which you'll see down below. But this is when a user actually holds down the button for a certain number of seconds. In that case, I call the blink LED function to blink the LED five times for that particular button. Down here, we have an else statement. This catches just normal button presses. So if you were to press the middle button really quick and let go of it, the light would come on. There would be a short delay down here. And then we turn all the lights off in one little statement here, all the LEDs. This is where you actually declare your analog buttons for the analog button library. Here's your individual buttons. These values in here are the low and high values that I was reading off of my actual button module. Since it's an analog signal, there are, there's some noise in the signal. Um, for instance, the middle button, when I would press it, I'd get a value between 318 and 320. Um, if you have a problem and your buttons aren't getting recognized correctly, I suggest in your loop statement, um, which is down below, uh, that you print out the analog value um, off of the analog pin zero and find what your minimum and maximum thresholds are for your each individual buttons. They should all be the same, we would hope. Okay, in the setup routine, we set all the pins for the LEDs to output mode. We set the button pin for input mode and we add our analog buttons. This again, this is the analog button library that basically adds the buttons that we declared um, right here. So the library knows that they're there. We begin serial communications, which I think I'm using to print out, yes, to print out the actual buttons when they get pressed. So you can open the serial monitor and you can see when buttons are getting pressed. And then our loop function, all we simply have is the analog buttons library has a check, the check buttons function, which if you look back up at the top, this allows the handle buttons routine to be called when a button's pressed. So it's fairly simple code. I know there's a lot there for beginners, um, but I commented it very well. You should be able to, to read all the comments and figure it out. All right, let's see what this actually looks like. Um, when buttons are pressed. All right, here we are with power applied. As you can see, if I press the left button, the left red LED lights up. Right, up, down, and center. If I press and hold a button, wait five seconds, the LED should flash quickly. And the same for any other button. All right, the link for the code, the sketch, will be down in the description. Um, inside of that link, you'll find the link that you need. Um, inside of the sketch, you'll find the link that you need for the analog button library um, that I used. All right, I hope that's a good tutorial for you guys, get you started on this, and I'll see you next time.